Oh, so the, the cable car um, is, yeah, a bone of contention for a lot of people out there. Um, and again, last night the uh, Hobart City Council have voted no, they won't go for the latest iteration mm. of the cable car. Going one, going twice, no. All right, guys, welcome back to The Property Pod, your weekly engagement into real estate here in the Hobart Marketplace. I'm your host, Aaron Horn. I am killing it with the intros. There's no doubt in my mind that I've got it every time from here on out. Smooth as butter. I actually feel in it's a bit repetitive these days and you need to change Oh, that. you want to mix it up? <laughs> All right, now that I've finally uh, nailed it down, I will uh, I will endeavour to come up with something new just for you. Next week, Pat, watch this space. There'll be something well, brand good, new. It would have been good this week with Olympics and all. You could have gone all Olympic gold. Ah, damn it. All right, let's start again. All right, guys, welcome to the Property Pod. It's a golden week and a golden time. This is a golden opportunity for you to find out all about real estate here in Hobart. Oh, damn. I'm your golden boy, Aaron Horn, and I'm joined by my silver and bronze buddies, Patrick and John. Welcome. We deserve that. <laughs> I stand corrected. You're unstoppable at the moment. Yeah, there you go. You, you, can't, you can't bring a good guy down. <laughs> Johnny Mac, let's talk your attire. For the oh. people out there that can't see, John is in his uh, McGregor Tartan. The Mc- yeah, the, uh, and the tradie, the tradie um, blunty boots and hard yak of trousers. Yeah, what's the story? Have you jumped ship and you've uh, you've joined the um No, the this, carpentry? Is, this is one of those uh, comedy berries that, had, that started yesterday where everything is outside of my control led me to not having time for a shower this morning. Um, <laughs> I so, wonder what that smell was. <laughs> so la- last night when we got finished late with an appointment and then we got got home and at, with the ba- with the bathroom being renovated at the moment we found out that the builders uh, one, or the builder he's got these guys in when waterproofing had forgot to strip back the uh, the room properly. So that you could just physically see the waterproofing coming off the wall. And so when the builders come back, then um, he's brought his um, son as well and four of us are just carving into this um, bathroom trying to get it all prepped ready for Friday for the tilers to come in. So then we're late last night stripping it all back, which is a hell of a job, and then we um, uh, put the primer on it, heated it, and then this morning had to get up and put the waterproofing in. So that was just as we are about to finish that, I got a call from the property stylists who are at the prop- uh, property in Moona that they're doing this morning, um, stuck in the pouring rain. Um, um, and what had happened, when they came to get the keys yesterday, they got given um, Unit 20 instead of Unit 23. And so I've had to drop the, the house, drive into Glenorchy, grab the keys, drop them off to Moona, and then I found out I don't have enough time to get dressed ready for the property point. <laughs> so I've driven straight so back here we to are. So, so here we, here we are. are. <laughs> you know, what? it's only a phone call, John, you can say you're running live. <laughs> no, it's not live, mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we've got we've got things to do, like, you know, anyway. Well, mate, you look like you've got things to uh, to work on sort of thing. So, you um, yeah, you might not be cutting deals today. Day, but you might be cutting some pine or something yeah, exactly. to, uh, to work on that cutting bad boy. Some pine. <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm a golden boy. I've got this this week. I'm all good. I'm pumped up on Olympic energy, and I know you are. You've been all about the Olympics. Yeah. You've been falling asleep on the couch uh, late at night, <laughs> getting much. in trouble from your wife. Pretty much every night since it started, I've been up to God knows what time. Just, <laughs> I can't get enough of it. I just love it. Oh, it's good. Olympic it, comes around, and I'm just all over that shit. And I, it's once once every four years too. So you got to lap it up where you can. And you know what's even better? Next mm. time around, it's only once in every three years, and next year's we get winter because we've oh, already right. lost a year, John. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so yeah, good. yeah. So yeah, next year there's. Uh, Winter Olympics? Next year, Winter Olympics, yeah, yeah. Winter like Olympic Day World Cup, like February or something, like really early in the year. So where where is that? Do you know the? I venue? can't remember that. Nah. I no. just thought it was really cool that Olymp- Olympics just keeps giving. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of giving, how amazing is it? Um, they are little Tassie uh, swimmer, superstar Ariane Titmus winning gold. Yeah, um, so did cool. you guys clock the uh, celebration of her coach? On, <laughs> no, uh, it's gone viral. I don't think anyone. Oh, you missed it, John. No. What, what? You <laughs> haven't seen the guy going ultimate warrior on the pole? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've what? got to see it. He's been doing too much Renos if he's not seen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You literally have to open up your phone and it just sits there. All right. You so open it up there and have a quick look at it now while me and Pat talk <laughs> Olympics. Um, yeah, no, Ariane Titmus, uh, Tasmanian born in Launceston, left at the age of 15 to go and um, kind of say, look, I'm going to make a real crack of this, really try and um, and go for gold and be the best in the world. And she wow. Smashed it. Smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. I saw... Um, <laughs> John's just watching the video every one night. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll just wait while he does that. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's gone viral over the last few days, <laughs> and um, people have been making memes saying, you oh, know, um, you know, when <clears throat> someone shows up to a party with a cob loaf, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the celebration. <laughs> my favourite one having kids was um, Monday, first day back at school. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, baby, <laughs> see you later, kids. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get that when your kid's a bit older, Aaron. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. I'll remember that. Um, no, so it's crazy. The Olympics are, are, are really in full swing and it's amazing to see. We've uh, lost John for the rest of the episode yeah. now. Well done, mate. <laughs> it's amazing to see a little Aussie battler uh, get up there and, and win gold. And speaking of little Aussie battlers, Pat, I know you saw the ABC, I don't know if it was a Twitter uh, war or. I don't know if you saw this, John, but mm. probably didn't because you didn't see that. So there's no yeah, way you saw I, this. I haven't seen all the good stuff lately at all. Uh, ABC Hobart put up this photo of, um, and it was like, is she from Brisbane or from Hobart? Mm. It was like Brisbane or Hobart because mm. she's trained in Brisbane and became, you know, successful in Brisbane, but okay. was but born she's here born, in born, Tasmania. Yeah. And. Um, it started this Twitter or this comment war on Facebook between ABC Brisbane and ABC Hobart and it was just hilarious. <laughs> and then like ABC Darwin's like chiming in, well, she did the last three months of training with us so does that mean she's from Darwin? <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, because that's where it matters the most. <laughs> and then Adelaide chimes in and Adelaide's like, ABC Australia, the kids are fighting again. Can you sort it out, Mum? <laughs> and like everyone's, all these different ABCs from around the country are just like all feeding into these comments and it was very good. It was very amusing, very amusing. <laughs> I guess the uh, the media controls at the um, – do the Twitter account is just waiting for a moment like this where oh. they could just run with it. I'll tell you what, some of those people that run social pages are just on amazing. The, yeah, on the but, money. Absolutely. You know, if your brother ever gives up comedy shows, he should just take residency on some <laughs> co- corporate <laughs> company's <laughs> Instagram page because that would be golden. <laughs> All right, boys, let's jump into some stuff that's going on in our local uh, place marketplace. We've been discussing uh, a local here, Tasmanian, but mm. let's jump into this um, Hobart, uh, the cable car. It's come up again. It's uh, It's been a bone oh, of contention long. for years and years. I actually only found out that um, by doing a little bit of research here that it dates back all the way to 18. 18- 95. So this is – Oh, really? This, there's been an idea to put a cable car for over a century. Mm. Um, there's this guy, the the self-proclaimed professor William John Hackett was the first to be recorded suggesting a form of aerial transport up the uh, mountain. But through all that time it's been an idea and it's always kind of come up um, – up. what's the word? For discussion. No, that's not what I was going for. Up what for debate? Called? Debate. Yeah, that's the yeah. <laughs> golden boy. <laughs> the golden boy. Yeah. He's down to silver. <laughs> that's his first gate tap. <laughs> like penalty, two point penalty right there. As the, the word just fell out of yeah. my head. It just wasn't there. It used to be there. It's gone. <laughs> no. So the the cable car um, is yeah a bone of contention for a lot of people out there. There's a bunch of people I heard on the radio this morning. A bunch of people saying like yeah yeah it should go ahead. A lot of people obviously uh, protest against it. Um, and again last night. Night, the uh, Hobart City Council have voted no, they won't go for the latest iteration mm. of the cable car. I just wanted to ask you guys, as agents working in the Hobart marketplace, what, what's your thoughts on the cable car? This could be controversial. We'll find out whether you lose fans I'll, from this. I'll jump in. Yeah. Mm. I was pretty much for it. Obviously, you know, in real estate, we want to see our, our city grow and our city expand to be a greater experience for yep. everyone and I think tourism plays a large part in that so mm. for me obviously cable cart tourism all goes hand in hand for sure um I think I still am pro cable car but over the time I've started you know mountain biking and I use the mountain a lot more than I used to mm. and you fast discover how many people are up there every single day just bushwalking and just experiencing it it's not just tourists there are so many locals that use it mm. um so I guess it really now comes back to you know, can more locals experience it easier with such a thing being yep. there or, uh, you know, should it be left the way it is and, you know, you have to find your own way on the mountain and that makes is that what makes it special? I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't fair know. enough. But I think I still am but I can understand why the council has voted it down because it's incredible. Like there's always more people that vote against things than put in positive yep, things for, for sure. something. So, Especially you know, in Hobart. Look at any company that gets a review. If you do something bad, you're bound to get a bad review, but yet 50 mm. people do something good and you only get one good review. So yeah, most definitely. I, I think it's a bit the same with this. The people that don't want it are going to be a lot more louder than the people that do because they take the time to write the objections and put in the submissions and, and that yeah. type of stuff. So yeah, I can understand the council's probably scared to say yes. Mm. But so that yeah, seven, take- I think it was 7-3 the vote was last night. <laughs> It would take a brave um, 
group of councilmen to um, or councillors to approve something like this again. And as it says, a hundred years where it's been kind of mm. proposed. Uh, the, another bit I read was there was there was an, a guy that had been given a slither of land way back when, and you know, in, in the nineteen hundreds, he was given this slither of land, like a carriageway here. His uh, great great relative in the 90s tried to claim oh well there was no kind of um, exit clause on when that sliver of land was gone so i'm claiming it yeah so they had to do this full um investigation and in the 1930s it did kind of say like no it's not your land anymore buddy so yeah so people have been trying to get this off the ground for ages and ages Mm. do you have an opinion john do you feel like it's a, a good thing or a bad thing it's something that should go ahead my opinion at the moment i'd be happy for it to just not go ahead at the moment and i guess it's only because I'm just I'm going to think of it very from a selfish perspective at the moment because I don't have enough skin in the game for it. Yep. So I'll just do it as a purely selfish individual perspective is that I can get up the mountain no trouble because I've got a car. Yep. You know, and I don't see the necessity to have to build and, you know, um, although it, when you look at all the different mountains around the world where they've done it well, it integrates into there pretty well and you don't really see it anyway. So I'm assuming that's sort of the designs that they're going for. A lot of the argument is, yeah, the scar on the side of the mountain and I think the organ pipes are one of the major um, issues that would kind of cut through there and, and yeah. cause a major issue with that. Um Yeah. And if, I, I wonder though if um, – because the in, in essence the – only time in which we can't get access to the mountain is during two heavy snowstorms. Yeah, so then so we all of this week. Yeah, so then so that's when the, obviously the the carts would be exceptionally useful to continue that tourism aspect. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like at the moment, I'd still say no, just probably a little bit more of a conservationist element for maintaining its um, its look and appeal, um, but. My opinion would be open to change if the you know the economics of it was justified exceptionally well that would really fund more beneficial projects along the way. Like a lot of the time, if you know the extra funds that could be generated for it can actually go into assistance in other conservation areas around Tasmania. Um, like it might service a greater good. Yeah, yeah. probably a bit more swayed, but at the moment, yeah, I'm, I'm I, uh, I'm probably more inclined to vote no. At the yeah, time, you're happy time to sit on the fence. Yeah, would would you potentially use it, experience the mountain more though if there was? The option to ride a cable car, or you still wouldn't go up the mountain. Oh, well, I like usually only um, ever go up if you know having friends visit interstate, and then the, uh, the little journey up. But in, inevitably, I would. You know, it's the same with you know part of the f- enjoyment of going up to Mona, for example, is going up the fer- the ferry and along the river because it's a completely different e- experience, experience yeah, rather than just so driving. So invariably, I'd, I'd most absolutely use it. Um, just as you, I suppose, like at the Stanley Nut, you know, they've got that. You can either walk up a really steep, um, the stairs. really hard stairs. Or you stairs, can ride in comfort. Or, or you can ride in comfort. <laughs> and I guess and the thing is because that option's available, that's why it's become such a strong draw card. Um, and, it, you know, the, to, to, to visit the top of the mountain, the cable cars could very well do that as well. And I suppose that's where the argument is, mm. comes in economically. Um, yeah, I know it's a very non, non-opinion, but my opinion at the moment would be uh, no. Um, unless they can make it the – yeah, I haven't looked at it too much, but if there was a really strong economical argument, well, then I'd probably be swayed. Well, uh, yeah, I guess looking at it from the um, the side of tourism, thing, things are, are really slight. Like obviously it wouldn't be made right now, but things are slowing down with the uh, COVID um, outbreak that's happening across mainland Australia. Mm. Um, so, yeah, another – shot in the arm for tourism at the moment would be these travel vouchers which they've uh, discussed bringing back so peter gutman's come out this past weekend i think he was in launceston having a chat and he's come out saying that they're going to go for a third round of uh, make yourself at home tourism vouchers okay you guys crossed this oh, I, <clears throat> I wasn't part of the first two rounds because i'm never organized enough to get on a website quick <laughs> enough <laughs> so they're I, always gone before well I actually, think you had some luck getting with them once. yeah no i did get some i um yeah i we went and used them we went to mole creek and visited a beautiful uh little kind of B- B&B thing, took our yeah, son cool. there. But um, speaking of the issues that they had with the website, I believe the new system that they're planning on doing will have a uh, more of a ballot type um, register your interest kind of vote rather than being like get on here at this time and watch the internet crash. <laughs> so the, uh, <laughs> the idea is for it to change. Look, looking at it, so the, the new one would be a $7.5 million voucher uh, run. Last year when they did run it, the scheme did generate $27.5 million worth of uh, – um, extra funding into the sector. Mm. So it was what you, I guess, would say is successful. We've got people yeah. in Tassie getting out and about and getting um, to see their local area and give the shot in the arm to the tourism sector. And so that wasn't that they gave $25 million away. No, that was that, but they just injected that re- much money. Because it, 
encourage people to spend more while they're away, uh, while they're out, effectively. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, yeah, spend this and do this um, experience, and you'll get and you'll, yeah, this back. this X back. So it was a calculated kind of um, expense mm. that the government put out. But yeah, it has injected twenty seven million into um, the sector. Um, the one thing that really sucked last time was that they were really specific on the days you could use them, sort of thing. So right. how many people have um, opportunities to go on holidays? Monday through Thursday, they're not, the days you could use them. Not going to happen. So I think, don't um, hold me to this, but I think the next set might be available to use on weekends. Mm-hmm. I believe that may be. Which um, like kind of makes sense, doesn't it? The, the idea that you'd give these grants and then limit them to Monday to Thursday because in the end it, for the businesses it's not going to matter when the income's generated, be it a Monday or a Sunday, um, provided the businesses, you know, the income could be produced. Like mm-hmm. why would it matter? I hope hopefully the first one was a really good test case to say like yes they kind of worked we got a good approach on them um, you know there were lots that went unused which was frustrating for all the people that tried to get on them and, ah, and didn't get a chance to um, to do it so they were like oh, oh I wanted to get one but I didn't get one mm. people got them and then just held on to them sort of thing they weren't transferable there was no way you could kind of sell them on yep so I think hopefully last one was a good, good test case they worked out like okay yep we've got this that works. Now let's do it on the weekends. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully then they'll get a larger proportion of people that actually get to utilise it. Yeah. Because obviously people have probably gone, I'll take that voucher. like, oh, crap, now I can't go Monday to Thursday. We'll stuff it, you know. Exactly, yeah. Mm. Oh, I thought I'd be able to use it. I didn't get a chance to. So, yeah, mm. no bueno. I think the other – one of the things, didn't we see that um, – just little things along tourism and generating activity. Didn't – is Brighton got uh, the approval for – a brand new um, – Not approval, my friend. They have opened up a brand new facility. It's boarding. Open. It's yeah, open. Yeah, it yeah, opened, that's right. Yeah. Opened uh, the end of June. It is a $6 million um, sporting facility mm. at the home of the old Brighton Football Club yes. where the Robins play. Yeah. It looks amazing. I love that kind of stuff because it's the same one where they did the huge update for KG5 and Glenorchy. I mean, it, to have to be able to invite that and have a much greater experience for both the spectator sport, you know, the, um, the, the like the teams and all that stuff, like it's brilliant. It it kind of takes away, you know, you go to the old footy club, you take your kids along, and it's that stinky smell of the. <laughs> I, I'm going to say it, urine in the corner of the room because oh, yeah. it's just an old cement room that had no. Um, no breathability and it's just kind of like, what's that smell, Dad? Oh, you don't want to know something. <laughs> but that's the old the old vibe of old footy club is that yeah. really musky, crappy rooms. Yeah. To be able to get these um, – State-of-the-art. S- facilities that are kind of, yeah, really coming, looking into it. The, uh, it's a two-storey building with a gym, club rooms, male and female change rooms, a function space, dining areas and a commercial kitchen. So mm-hmm. I've seen the Brighton City Council have been saying, you know, like soon we'll be taking bookings, you can kind of have your – 50th, your 30th, your 21st, you can yeah. have all your things coming. You could have a wedding there if, if you're kind of that way inclined. Well, we our business hosted numerous um, uh, client nights at the Newtown Hockey Centre, um, yep. which can still do it, you know. So they're awesome venues for us. Which was another one that kind of got a real um, boost when it was kind of developed from being like, oh, look, we've got one little um, – Pitch here. Mm. Now there's three amazing things that's used kind of every night of the week for yeah. the AFL 9s. It's used for so much um, other community stuff and, yeah, functions galore. Yeah, yeah. And I only hope that, like, by revitalising the local um, footy clubs in different areas, it actually just encourages people to re-engage with it, you know, in a, on, a, on a much grander scale again because you've actually got a more comfortable experience for both spectators and players. Mm. So rather than, like you said, yeah, you're inviting everyone to the to the wee-smelling um, change rooms, it's like, you know what, it's just a little bit better these days. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and you've got gone to the days, I suppose, where everyone's just stuck in the car hooting, you know, tooting their horn, which just sucks for Tazzy because I think we all know, like, you've got those cold mornings. It's not a pleasant, you know, at those times of the day, it's not a pleasant time to watch. Uh, I know? have memories going back to being a wee little kid. I was tiny. I had tiny little stick legs that kind of had no fat on them and yeah. you go out there for your, like, nine o'clock game and the frost is still on the <laughs> um, ground and, oh, yeah. and you'd be so scared to get bumped and hit the ice. Yeah. And it was like... <laughs> Like being a mighty duck, it was so scary. <laughs> like being a mighty duck. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I uh, I shout out to the uh, the good facilities. Parents can now go and be warm and watch their kids <laughs> run around on the icy stuff. Hot pies. 
<laughs> Look, I've got a bunch of real estate stuff here, but we've been talking for the length of, a, of an average show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are we happy uh, just to say this is a community episode? I'm uh, yeah. We wanted to just have a yarn. It's been a fun one. Mm. We, look, we've learned a little bit about Tassie and we want tourism to boost. We're really happy for um, a little bit of development that's going on. And look, we hit a hot topic with the cable cast, so this is going to go viral uh, before you know it. Absolutely, yeah. And we've got opinions. Yep. <laughs> I'm a gold medalist. You guys are silver and bronze. I'll take it. And it's been a fun little recording. Yeah, and yeah. Thanks to everybody thanks, guys. Uh, that's been out there listening. Take care. All right, Uru. You've been listening to the Property Pod, recorded and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Property Co. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek their news, their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of the